Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net, and uh, we are back from the holiday, and we have a surprise guest. Um, we got Elliot LeBeau on the line straight out of Hawaii. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Elliot is. He's one of the pioneers of the sport, and now he's making some of the top videos in the sport and just released Autofocus. And um, anyway, I just want to welcome you, Elliot. Why don't you say hello to everyone? What's up, everybody? How are things going over there? Good, good. Just, um... Just wrapped up the video and um, just been busy trying to get it out and um, had pretty good response so far and um, just we've been riding a bunch. Now he's been firing and uh, starting up, starting to organize for uh, 2006 for the next video. So you know, autofocus. It's taken you to a lot of destinations. I mean, and you know, why don't you just talk about a little bit about how you got into video making and. Because I think that paints the story of, of why your videos are probably so good. Well, it actually started um, from the early, early days. It's pretty much just me and Lou kiting out here in Maui and some other guys. And um, I had known Chris um, Tronalon, so I called Chris to come shoot um, some stuff right when we were first learning and, and started kiting. And no one really knew what the sport was and stuff. And that kind of... And all that footage of me and Lou and Mauricio and a few of the other guys here at Maui ended up, um, we had accumulated all that footage for, um, ended up being the high video. And um, we and me and Lou spent a lot of late nights with Chris, helping him edit and stuff, um, trying to put it all together. And we ended up putting it all together. And that, I think that was Chris's first video that came out. And so we, we had, I had, a camera and Lou had a camera so we we were always shooting each other and stuff so some of the footage that was in there was stuff that we just kind of accumulated um, I think we went to Hood River and I think Lou's girlfriend at the time had a camera so she shot some stuff and we just kind of shot each other um, so that's how we started shooting and then um, I guess in 2000 um, I was in Lucotte, France at a contest there kiting and uh, I blew my knee out so that was kind of the start of everything for me. So I blew my knee out and basically had to take six months out of riding. was already shooting a little at the moment, so basically ended up, you know, at the beach. I couldn't ride, so I just shoot, started shooting and accumulating more footage and kind of snowballed from there. And, and it's kind of funny that you said you you blew your knee out at Lakot. It isn't funny, but it's funny of the way that you named your production company. And why don't you talk about that? Well, yeah, I blew out my ACL, which is the uh, anterior cruciate ligament in your knee. So I figured, uh, shoot, I might as well call it that since <laughs> that's what started me shooting. And then, uh, you know, it just, like I said, kind of snowballed from there and ended up ended up with enough footage to, you know, Lou was always over here and Reese were like, man, you should just make it a new video. I'm like, nah, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I, I had shot some stuff and, um, giving it to Tron alone, so he released some footage and some other videos, and then finally ended up with just enough enough footage on my hard drive, and decided just to spit out a video. And that one was uh, 10.4. I think I think that was 2000, <laughs> 2003, something like that. Yeah, that was a couple years. Yeah, that was 2003. Yeah, 03, something like that. So that you know, it just kind of snowballed from there. But that's how I got the name because. I had to have surgery done on, on my knee. So it's all good now, but that's how the ACL production started. In the ACL productions, it's it's you put out, you know, 10-4, and then you put out your last video, which was the Cabrina video. Yeah, that was Metropolis. Metropolis, which, I mean, that had some really um, technical um, filming in there. And then now you've... you've put out autofocus and all of your all of your dvds have definitely been different and what do you think is the difference between autofocus um from your you know your previous videos um this one we kind of i i knew that i wanted to do like a uh um heavily wake influenced kite video so we decided to mostly just film sliders and so i kind of we kind of have a crew that we work pretty tight, like Dre, Morris, Bert, Moy, um, Jason Stone, Dob, like the crew, the whole crew for autofocus, there's like seven guidance leads act, and um, we kind of just 
figured out, like, hey, why don't we go somewhere and do something that we want to do? And everyone was kind of in agreement. They all wanted to ride sliders. And everyone was not really over flat water tricks and stuff, but kind of wanted to do something different. I, I was fully up for filming something different because, you know, all the kite videos seem the same out now. So it kind of just morphed into this um, travel trip slash filming session slash progression session. <laughs> That's kind of how I describe how autofocus ended up. So, um, but you know, it's just basically a group of friends that ride together and hang together, and um, you know, we ended up building all the stuff that we rode. So that was kind of a story in itself. And um, I was pretty stoked with all the footage that we got out of it. But basically, you know, trying to put something different out there rather than the normal kite video that everyone sees. So. And you say you traveled to a lot of destinations. What what destinations you, did you hit up? We hit up. Actually, we didn't. We spent a lot more time in fewer destinations. So we started out in um, Antigua, which is where Dre lives, and our plan was to uh, session that Memorial Bay spot, which we had pretty good footage from Metropolis, but we kind of felt that we didn't really have enough time there. So we decided to basically camp out there until we got everything built, everything sessioned, and everyone was stoked on the footage that they got. So that ended up being a month and a half in Antigua. Then we went to DR, and the guys at Extreme Hotels, Josh and um, everyone down there, totally took care of us. So we spent some time there, stopped, flew down. Um, was in school and stuff, so he came down. So it was Moy, Stav, and Dre. Went down to DR. We shot a bunch of stuff down in Encuentro and uh, spent like a month there. And then we went to Venezuela down in Coche. And Eduardo, um, all the guys down there, um, spent another month down there. They had a big slider park that they built um, for us. So um, we went. We basically dropped in right after the PKRA. So everyone left, and we had it to ourselves. Which so you just been flying around, riding and shooting? Yeah, most yeah. I I didn't really ride that much at all. It's just on a mission to shoot, shoot, shoot. So when I got back to Maui and started editing, I I logged a bunch of stuff already on the road. So I was already, you know, a third of the way through a lot of the work that you got to do to put the video together. But I got back to Maui and I was like super psyched to ride because I've been filming, you know, so much. So well, and I think. I mean, the, the photos have come out in a lot of the different magazines, and I, I want to give, um, just take a moment to talk about your girlfriend, uh, Tracy Kraft, because she's one of the top photographers in the sport. I mean, her photos have been all over covers and all over every magazine, and um, she's your partner. She's your sidekick. Yeah, that's my, my girlfriend, Tracy, just killed it on, this, on the trip. Um, I mean, you know, we get along so well already that it's just, like, super easy to go out and um, I she just uh, I don't you know she does her own thing. She, I just say hey we're gonna session this and do whatever you want shoot it however you want and she ends up coming up with all these you know really nice angles and she killed it though. I was like saw all the photos after and I was like man I was just tripping. They were really nice. And, uh, yeah, I think she got like I don't know. I think she got ads with almost everybody and I think she got covers on just about everybody's magazine. So pretty lucky. The spots that we went to are really you know. Nice light. Um, the water is like nice and blue in Antigua, and so put that together with the crew we had. You're gonna you're gonna end up getting something even if you don't want to, you know. Well, that's cool. And and so in the crew, um, you know, you have like some of the hardest chargers, freestyle, and free riders in the sport. And what was it like working with all those guys? Those guys are super easy, man. Like I mean, like I said, we're all friends anyway, so we all hang out. Regardless, if we weren't even riding, we'd be just cruising on Maui or wherever we're at. So, you know, it's just basically kind of a documentary of, of you know, a group of friends. So it's not even really work, you know. It's just kind of like fun time slash party slash ride, shoot it. And then, you know, that's kind of the, the atmosphere with that crew. And, uh, you know, and everyone's always in a good mood riding. There's no, like, tension. So... You know, the sessions that you usually get with that crew are pretty good because no one's really stressing out and, you know, no one's trying to compete with each other. So, you know, it ends up being pretty fun. Well, 
and you know, let's switch gears a little bit. And you know, I mean, it's I think it's your videos um, and your DVDs that you've been putting out have just been really sick. I've I've watched every one of them, and I can remember back in Bonaire and. I was supposed to be filming, and I thought I was filming, and I didn't turn the camera on, and you yelled at me when we, when you were filming 10-4. <laughs> I remember that. And uh, actually, to this day, I know how to hold the video camera straight, the horizon line straight, from when we took that trip to the Caribbean, so I did learn from you, too. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, the, what I really want to get to is the fact is that you're you're one of the pioneers of the sport and you're very humble and you're very soft-spoken and you're kind of like the quiet guy that shows up and just goes and does his thing. And, I mean, you were the guy. It was Lou and Elliot in the very beginning. And when we talked to Lou, um, I mean, Lou just has nothing but saying that you are a genius. You're, you're, you know, you're the guy. And so why don't you talk a little bit about what it was like, like, back in the early days of Maui and you guys pioneering Kite Beach and Lower Kanaha there? You know, it's kind of weird. I was thinking about that the other day because, um, I don't know, it's just kind of a different, whole different vibe when you would go ride and no one was around you know kind of like we were on our own you know and we had to launch ourselves no one was like looking after us and basically you know i remember going out a lot of times here on maui it was just me and lou and maybe not even maybe one other guy or flash or somebody else who was here but you know, a lot of times you didn't even know if you're going to get back into shore and for a while there we didn't even know how to stay up wind so we we're just doing downwinders and stuff and you know, when you're doing, like, these long downwinders here on Maui, you're going through a lot of these outer reefs, this big surf and stuff. So, you know, you pretty much would launch, and you're like, man, I don't know where I'm going to end up or even if I'm going to get back, but you go anyway. And then, you know, so it was kind of like that kind of feeling, I guess, whereas now it's kind of like, you know, someone's always around to launch your kite or, you know, there's always someone looking after you, drag you in if you go down or whatever. So, but I don't know. I guess it kind of happened pretty quick. You know, we didn't really realize what was going on around us. We were just kind of into our own thing. You know, like, you know, any any kid coming up today would just be focused on, you know, the next day and what trick they want to learn and, you know, what the wind is going to do and stuff like that. That's all we were really concerned about is, you know, kind of tripping out and doing our own thing. It had to have been really interesting back then um, because of the gear. And I know that you're – you're attributed to developing a lot of that gear and, and well, R, doing the R&D on it and also inventing a lot of it. And, I mean, Lou gives you credit for one of the first chicken loop systems. Uh, shit, I don't know if I want to take credit for that. <laughs> but I don't know. No, you know what? I don't think, I don't know, that's probably Don Montague or someone. You know, the, I don't know, the stuff we came up with was just stuff that we needed, you know, like this little shit that we build at the house but you know none of that shit really matters because the stuff that Lou is doing you know it doesn't matter how many shackles or little straps you have the bottom line is someone's someone's got to do something in the water to inspire some other guys and that guy was Lou so I mean in my eyes so on the riding side the way bigger contributing kind of gadget or buckle or whatever that would help the sport so you know in my eyes Lou is key to the whole sport going know where it needs to go but people just didn't realize it that you know i always used to tell lou he was like four years ahead of everyone and he probably still is as far as you know his thinking and stuff but he was just so far ahead that no one could grasp what he was into you know i mean i, I mean a few of us could but the majority of the industry couldn't well and back in the day um you two were you guys went to lakot the first year together and actually we just did an interview on the mag in the magazine that actually I just got the very first preview copies of my next magazine and there's an article in there with uh, Corey Rosler and um, he talks about Lacotte and how you Lou and him and I and um, there's a few other names that, that he mentions in there but how all these different styles coming together and how you guys just blew everyone's mind and then I remember like Rafael Sal sent us a video of what he was into, and he had like this big directional and foil kites, and was like dumping sandbars. We're like, man, like you know, that's cool, but we're totally into this trip, which is like you know, the whole wakeboard deal. And so it's pretty cool. We were like swapping videos, like, hey, this is what we're doing. This is you know, you sending us stuff, and then we finally all got together in Lucat there, and like had a chance to like, oh, we finally meet all the guys, you know, that you're always talking to and hearing about and stuff and then seeing everyone else's gear and equipment it's pretty it's pretty cool but we froze our asses off and then uh i just remember being freezing cold and like me and lou had like wetsuits or all torn wetsuits and like crappy gear but we were all stoked it's pretty cool and 
you know, you came you came from a windsurfing background, so you were a professional windsurfer who pretty much just got turned on to kiting, and then you 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 went over to an event. You guys made history. You came back, and how did things change after Lakot? Uh, you know, th- when we started, there wasn't anything. There's all it was is a bunch of people kiting and going out every day and trying to do, you know, trying to learn the sport. And then at some point, it transitioned from, uh, you know, there started to be like. Uh, talk of an industry or, you know, people started talking like, hey, maybe we can make these things, maybe we can, you know, turn it into something, and, you know, there's always the early people involved, like, you know, like, um, Robbie and Don and Flash, I mean, all, all the guys who started even kiting before we did, but, you know, there was no Nash kites, there was no Karina kites, there was no North kites, but I remember me and Luke, like, talking so we were talking like wakeboard companies were like, man, this is what we're doing, and we're using your wakeboards and bindings, and you think you'd give us a pair of bindings or something so we could use it? And they're like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, we're not interested, not interested. And one of the only guys that came through was Tony Finn at Liquid Force, and uh, he actually flew out to Maui, stayed with me and Lou, and just come and check it out, kiting, and see if he was interested in getting into it. And that started the whole like pickle pork, Jimmy Lewis thing, and liquid force. So that kind of started, and then we also started up the um, air rush, which was me, Lou, Barry Spanier, Ethan, Karen Baxter, and um, that was to make the kites kind of for liquid force in the early days. And then um, that kind of fell through. Air rush is still in existence, but we're not really involved with them anymore. So that's how that kind of started. But you know, it kind of just turned into um, a point where we started to um, actually earn a paycheck on our kite board, which is pretty crazy, fathoming that at the moment, you know. So, you know, it got kind of, um, I wouldn't say funny, but, you know, when, when it transitions out of out of just doing it for fun and then all of a sudden everyone's getting paid to do it, then everyone starts picking their sides and, you know, as soon as you introduce money, stuff gets all weird. And so that's kind of what happened a little bit, but, but you know. It's all good. Can't complain. <laughs> well, and and let's talk a little bit about Jimmy Lewis because you guys, I that's how I met you and Lou was through Jimmy Lewis, and um, I ordered my very first. I got a pickle fork and a Slayer, and the Slayer was the Elliot LeBeau model, and the pickle fork was the Lou model, and I thought they were the coolest thing. And and then I didn't know how to kite, and I think I was emailing Lou and. Um, Jimmy gave me his email address, and then we all started talking, and then I used to send you guys mayonnaise and peanut butter when I used to work at Best Foods. I remember, man. We got a bar, or we got a big tub of, like, crunchy peanut butter from this guy, Ryan Riccatelli. We were like, what? We used to get food from Jimmy all the time. It was cracking up. But yeah, I remember that for sure. And I remember the first time I came over to Maui and actually met you guys in person, and I don't, I don't know if that was, I think it was, like, 99 or something like that, and... I thought it's just interesting that all these years have passed and everybody seemed to have found their position or place in the sport. And, you know, Jimmy Lewis and you, I know you guys worked on a lot of things over the years. Do you guys still work together at all, or what's your relationship there? Super good friends with Jimmy. I see him all the time. He just he built me a really sick um, a 5'10 balsa, um, like a really heavy tow board, but built for kiting big waves, and it works insane. He kited jaws with it, like, Two and a half weeks ago or something. So um, I still get I still get some some of my boards from Jimmy, um, some of my boards from Pat Ross, and like, I'm pretty much all into waves now. I don't really do pretty much flat water stuff anymore. So all my boards are like you know surfboards or directional wave boards or tow boards or something. But but yeah, no, Jimmy's doing good. It, you know, I see him all the time here on Maui. I still get some boards from him. Well, and with that said, you know, I know that you've been probably working a lot on your videos but i know that you every time i've ever traveled with you which is quite a bit i mean you're the guy that's the first guy on the water and the last guy off and and probably the gears changed a little bit but i mean are you still pretty much the same way yeah i mean i like i usually drop everything you know no matter what i'm doing if it gets good here you know i only live like three minutes from from lane to keep so which is probably a good thing and a bad thing but you know anytime it gets windy and there's waves i just drop everything and go so I still have as much fun today as, you know, I did when I started just because there's 
especially on the wave side of things, just learning how to ride waves better and learning stuff in the waves. So, you know, living here on Maui, we're pretty fortunate to have um, pretty consistent conditions for wind and waves. So, um, but yeah, no, still riding every day. Uh, every day there's wind and stuff. What gear are you on? Um, right now, I have Cabrina Switchblades, and I have some boards from Pat Ross, and I've been using a bunch, like a 510, 64. Um, I got like another 510 from Jimmy that I use for bigger surf, but mostly just directional wave boards, you know, basically epoxy surfboards. And on the kites, you know, I mean, this is a you're a perfect person to ask this question because you've flown everything since two line to today, and what do you think about the new flat or bow kite style? Um, they work, like for Maui, they're really good because it's super gusty here, and so if you're going to ride hooked in, they, they work really well, but for unhooking, wave riding, um, I think the older kites are probably a little bit better right now, so I wouldn't say the newer kites are necessarily the end-all answer, but it's kind of a step in the right direction. Well, that's cool, and I'm sure it, it, it from you, it, I, I know you know the gear, so I know that everyone's going to be really stoked to hear your opinion and you know we're running out of time here so i want to wrap things up i want to remind everybody autofocus um it's 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 just released um and where can everyone find information on it Elliot? um you can check out the acl productions website and that's at um www.aclproductions.com and then uh we built a site for like the making of which is um autofocusdvd.com and that kind of journalized the whole uh the whole DVD and how we made it and stuff. So you can check either one of those sites, order it online, check out the trailer, or buy it in a shop. This should be out in everywhere in like about a week. So, Well, we got to wrap things up here, Elliot, but I just want to give you a chance to uh, drop some bombs for all your friends over there on Maui and, and your family or whomever you want to give a shout-out to. So why don't you do that now? Uh, shoot, thanks, everyone, for uh, – if you bought my video, thanks. <laughs> And I, everyone that, that uh, like the whole riding crew, all the guys that um, rode their asses off for the video, which you'll see. And then um, um, we had a lot of sponsors that helped us out, um, Liquid Force, uh, Whippica, Real Kiteboarding, um, all the guys over at Extreme Hotels, Josh and Bill, thanks for the hotel rooms. Um, Eduardo down at uh, margaritakitesurf.com. And uh, Hotel Coche Paradise. Uh, who else? Oh, uh, Steve Rosenberg over at Canaan and the kind guys. Anyway, all the guys that helped us on the video. Um, thanks a bunch. And uh, look for another one out at the end of 2006. That'll be even sicker. I guess that's it. And uh, thanks, everyone. Hey, Elliot. Thanks for coming on. And, and everybody, you know, Elliot is, like I said, he, he works hard. Go out there, go to his site, support this guy, buy one of his videos. Um, I mean, this is the guy who keeps the the dream alive and is out there every day trying to capture what these guys are doing and, and as they're basically pushing the levels of our sport. So anyway, Elliot, we'll be checking back in with you soon. Please say hello to Tracy. And um, all right, man, uh, we'll be posting this up the, by Thursday. Right on. Thanks, Ryan.